Welcome to Module 5, which describes the risks posed by plant, machinery and noise, and how to deal with them in a way that keeps the workforce safe. Plant and machinery are dangerous. People can be struck and injured by moving parts or ejected material. Parts of the body can also be drawn in or trapped between rollers, belts and pulley drives. Sharp edges can cause cuts and severing injuries. Sharp pointed parts can cause stabbing or puncture the skin. And rough surface parts can cause friction or abrasion. People can be crushed, both between parts moving together or towards a fixed part of the machine, wall or other object. And two parts moving past one another can cause shearing. Other hazards associated with machinery include parts of the machine. Materials and emissions can be hot or cold enough to cause burns or scolds. Electricity, which can cause shocks and burns. Injuries can also occur due to machinery becoming unreliable, developing faults or being misused through inexperience or lack of training. The provision and use of work equipment regulations, sometimes known as PUA, deal with health and safety aspects of work equipment and the machinery used every day in workplaces across the country. The main points in the PUA regulations are Equipment must be suitable for the task. Equipment must be maintained and stored correctly. Users must be given information on safety and the correct use of the equipment. Machinery must be guarded. The machinery must have adequate, easily identifiable stop controls. The machinery must be capable of being isolated. Machines must be stable. Lighting must be adequate. The machines must be capable of being maintained safely and all relevant marking and warning signs should be clearly visible. You can control these hazards through a mix of guarding systems and plan maintenance. The measures you use to prevent access to dangerous parts should be in the following order. In some cases, it may be necessary to use a combination of these measures. Use fixed guards secured with screws or nuts and bolts to enclose the dangerous parts whenever possible. Use the best material where wire mesh is used, make sure the holes are not large enough to allow access to moving parts. If fixed guards are not practical, use other methods, such as interlocking the guard so the machine cannot start before the guard is closed and cannot be opened while the machine is moving. In some cases, trip systems, such as photoelectric devices, pressure sensitive mats or automatic guards may be used if other guards are not practical. Where guards cannot give full protection, consider using jigs, holders and push sticks. Control any remaining risk by providing the operator with the necessary information, instruction, training, supervision and appropriate safety equipment. Carry out plan maintenance on plant and equipment regularly. Put faults right and ensure equipment is working effectively. Unsafe maintenance can cause injuries either during the maintenance itself or when people are using badly maintained or poorly repaired equipment. If maintenance has been poor, tools could break during use, machinery could start up unexpectedly and there could be leaks of fluid such as coolant. If there is a problem with machinery, signs and barriers should be set up and, if necessary, people positioned to keep staff away from the area. When it comes to using equipment at work, the following considerations should be made. The operator should be trained and competent. Authorization should be obtained from your supervisor or manager before using any equipment. You should carry out a visual check to make sure the equipment is safe before starting work and make sure it has a valid test certificate. Always use machines and equipment safely. Here are some useful tips on eliminating or controlling hazards around plant and machinery. Undertake risk assessments and planning. Define walkways with clear signage. 
make comprehensive method statements available. Use the correct equipment for the task and check for safety. Adequate training should be provided and communication with workers should be clear and precise. Use toolbox talks to ensure training is adequate and relevant and that people are competent. Please click Next to continue. Noise at work is covered by the Noise at Work regulations. Noise can cause permanent and disabling hearing damage. This can be gradual from exposure over time or can be caused by sudden very loud noises. Very high noise levels can kill parts of the ear. People may also develop tinnitus, a ringing, whistling, buzzing or humming noise in their ears. This distressing condition can lead to an inability to concentrate and difficulty sleeping. Noise can also cause pain. If you experience pain, get away from the noise quickly. Report what has happened. Have your hearing checked. Noise at work can interfere with communications by making warnings or instructions harder to hear. It can also reduce your general awareness of your surroundings. High noise levels are rare, but if conversation is difficult at two meters, you should take action. Noise can be generated by powered tools or machinery, impacts, including hammering, drop forging, pneumatic impact tools, and explosive sources, such as cartridge operated tools, detonators, or guns, or traffic or large mobile machines such as excavators. Management can control noise by conducting an initial noise assessment. This is a detailed measurement and monitoring of levels of sound in a particular area undertaken by a competent person. Noise levels are measured in decibels. A record of the assessment should be recorded and kept. The decibel scale is logarithmic. That means that a loud rock concert at about 120 decibels is not twice as loud as a conversation at 60 decibels. It's actually 64 times louder. That's because for every 10 decibels of increase, the perceived loudness doubles. The level at which employers must assess the risk to workers' health and provide them with information and training is 80 decibels. When the daily or weekly average exposure reaches 85 decibels, employees must be provided with hearing protection and hearing protection zones need to be established. There is also an exposure limit value of 87 decibels, taking account of any reduction in exposure provided by hearing protection. Workers must not be exposed to levels over this limit. When noise levels go above 85 decibels, the employer must reduce exposure by a means other than providing hearing protection. If noise levels still remain above 85 decibels once all controls are in place, then the employer must create a hearing protection zone, provide extra hearing protection, ensure hearing protection is worn at all times within the area. Noisy machines can be replaced, positioned further away from workers, damped or isolated with anti-vibration mounts and flexible couplings. Other noise reducing techniques include erecting barriers and screens around noisy machines to block direct sound and sound absorbent materials to cut down reflected sound. If the noise cannot be controlled by these types of measure, then management should provide employees with a last resort, appropriate hearing protection and training. There are many types of hearing protection, including earplugs and ear defenders, and they all have the same issues associated with them. They are only effective if worn. They have to fit well. They have to be the correct type for the specific noise. They have to be clean and undamaged. If you need to wear protection, you must have instruction and training to ensure correct fitting. In summary, the key actions that should be taken to reduce the risk of harm from noise at work are 
Keep exposure time to a minimum. Keep as far from the noise as you can. Wear earplugs or ear defenders. Check for hearing problems. For example, do you have to have the TV turned up higher than other family members? And have your hearing checked professionally. Please click Next to continue. Vibration problems such as hand arm vibration syndrome, HAVS, can be caused by operating handheld power tools. Examples include road breakers, hand guided equipment like powered lawnmowers, or holding materials that are being processed by hand fed machines, such as pedestal grinders. HAVS is a painful disabling condition that affects the nerves, blood vessels, muscles, and joints of the hands and arms. It causes tingling and numbness in the fingers, reduced grip strength and sense of touch. It also affects the blood circulation, which can result in vibration white finger. Vibration risk controls include alternative work methods which eliminate or reduce exposure, mechanization or automization of the work. For example, if you're breaking concrete, Use an excavating machine with a breaker attachment rather than a handheld breaker. Make sure the equipment selected for the task is suitable and can do the work efficiently. Select the lowest vibration level tool that's suitable and limit the use of high vibration tools. For example, use a rotary drill rather than one with a hammer action. Please click next to continue.